Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you like this video, please hit the like button below, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so I can keep making great content for you guys. This is the March 2019 calculator section. Without further ado, let's do this. Number one, Michaela is planning an event in the 5,400 square foot room. We want to have at least eight square feet per person. What's the maximum of people that could attend this event? All we got to do is take 5,400 and divide it by eight, which should give us 675B. Number two, uh, we have a figure. X is 65, Y is 75, what is the value of Z? Whenever they give us values, we plug them in. So let's plug them in. Uh, X is 65, so 65. Y is 75, so replace Y with 75. Now, whenever lines intersect, we have what are called vertical angles. And those are basically the angles that are across from each other. And they're always going to be equal. So if Y is 75, that tells us that P is 75. And now since P, X, and uh, Z are on the same line, those three angles have to add up to 180. So we've got 65 plus 75 is going to give us 140. So Z needs to be 180 minus 40. So Z is just going to be uh, C, 40. Number three, one half X minus one six X equals one. What is the value of X? Just Combine, just get common denominators, subtract the fractions, and solve for x. So the, so we can rewrite this as uh, 3 over 6x minus 1, 6x equals 1. So 2 over 6x equals 1. So 2x equals 6. So x is going to be equal to 3c. Number 4. We have a little scatter plot here, line of best fit. Each data point goes up three, a new line is drawn. How will the Y intercept change? Um, they basically told us everything goes up by three, right? So that means the Y intercept will also go up by three. So A is our answer. Number four, I'm um, sorry, number five, right? Yeah, number five. Uh, how, so we have a couple lines. How many solutions does the system of equations have? The solutions is just where they intersect, where they cross. They cross at exactly one point, this one. So our answer is going to be B1. Number six, let's see. What is the probability that Gerardo will select a white shirt? The way you get a probability is it's just your uh, desired outcomes over your total outcomes. So this becomes, our total is 3 plus W. We're looking for just the white, so we're going to have W over 3 plus W, which is going to be uh, answer choice A. Okay, number seven, a bunch of stuff. We have this equation. Um, we have a, this distance, okay. And the graph, point zero zero is the entry to the bridge. What represents the exit of the bridge on the opposite end? So on the opposite end is gonna be right here, basically, right? Because the distance should be, should end up being whatever it is, and the height at the end should be zero. So it looks like D is going to be our answer because that is the other x-intercept. Number eight, um, we have a passes to the point zero two as a slope of five, which could this be? Well, only one of these equations is a slope of five, right? The last one. So our answer is going to be D. Number nine. Which of the following could be the slope of the line of best fit for these data? Uh, okay, so basically a line of best fit kind of just goes through the line. So it's going to look something like this. And we basically want to see what the slope is going to be roughly. So just pick any two points and calculate their slope. Let's say one point is going to be 8, 35. And the other one can be, let's say, 3, 25. Just calculate the slope. That's going to be 35 minus 25 over 8 minus 3 
equals 10 over 5, which is about, which is going to be equal to 2. The answer that's closest to 2 is A, so A is our answer. Number 10, we have a function, and which of the following is not an x-intercept? So we know our x-intercepts from this function are going to be whatever, uh, it's basically going to be numbers opposite of the sign of the numbers here. So, like, if x plus 4 is a factor here, that means this one solution is going to be negative 4. Uh, x minus 1 is another factor, so that solution is going to be 1. And then the other one is 2x minus 3. So, well, 2x minus 3, we set it equal to 0, so 2x equals 3, so x equals 3 over 2. The only one of these that's not one of these numbers is b negative 2 thirds. That's our answer. Okay, we've got a bunch of information here. Um, we got a function c about catfish, okay. A channel catfish and then we have a function f that's about flathead catfish okay and let's look at the question which of the following is closest to the age the nearest whole year of a flathead catfish just 31 inches long so the f value is how long it is so i'm going to replace f of t with 31 and this is going to be equal to 3t plus 4 um so 27 equals 3t, so t equals 9, and the value that's closest to the 9 is a 10, so that's our answer. Number 12, which of the following equations could define c as a function of t? Cool. So we've got a table full of, this, full of the t values for the c function, right? So they give us values, just plug them in, and whichever one works, um, whichever equation works for all the values is going to be our answer. Let's see what we get if we plug in 1. Um, well, if we plug in 1 for A, we're going to get 2.5 plus 6, which is 8.5, so that works. If we plug in 2, we're going to get 5 plus 6, which is 11, which works. If we plug in 3, we're going to get um, 2.5 times 3, 7.5 plus 6, which is 13.5. And if we plug in 4, we're going to get 16, so perfect. A it works, and we don't even have to test anything else out because everything worked with A. Number 13, okay, we have a bunch of info here, um, cool, 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 cool. Number 13, what is the range in years of the mean ages of the patients who had contact lens fittings in the country shown? Um, so the range is just the biggest number minus the smallest number. Our biggest one here looks to be 36.3. So we're going to subtract the smallest one, which is 26.6. And this should give us 9.7. So C is the answer. 14, um, which approx best approximates the number of patients surveyed who received refitting, refittings, fittings, refillings in New Zealand. So let's look at New Zealand. Uh, percent refittings. So we went from, uh, New Zealand is right over here, 30, looks like something like 38 up to 100. So 30 to 100, basically 62% of the people. Again, I got that because over here where the light meets the dark, it's at about 38. It goes all the way up to 100. So that's so 100 minus 38 is 62, so about 62%. So we need to take 62% of... The total number of, fit, of fittings, there was 721. So I'm just going to do 0. 0.62 times 721. Let's see what that gets us. Uh, 0. 0.62 times 721. 447. Perfect. That's 447 is right there. So C is our answer. Okay, we're like... Boom, 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 powering through this, like running through like a train. Um, number five. Okay, great. Well, oh, these questions are the best. Um, park ranger asked a random sample of visitors how far they hiked during their visit. 
estimated mean was 4.5, margin of error 0.5, which is a conclusion drawn from these data. Let's go through these one by one and see what we can eliminate. Uh, it's likely that all visitors hiked between four and five miles. It doesn't have to be this because you had, if any one visitor hiked more or less, that's perfectly plausible for that to have happened. And the average could still become 4.5, so A is out. It is likely that most visitors hiked exactly five miles. No reason for this either. We could have had a bunch do 4.6, a bunch do 4.4, and the average becomes 4.5, so that one's out. It is not possible that any visitor hiked less than three miles. Totally possible, because one could have hiked like less than three miles, and the other one could have hiked a large number of miles, way bigger than 4.5, to get an average of 4.5. So C is out. D, it is plausible that the mean distance hiked for all visitors is between four and five miles. Yeah. If the average is 4.5 and the margin of error is 0.5, it means it's likely that the mean is going to be between 4 and 5, so that's going to be our answer. Number 16. Um, some info on this table. What fraction of the observed matings were between fruit flies and uh, that were raised on the same medium? Okay. So it's what percent of the fruit f of the... Uh, observed meetings, right? So we have a total of, it looks like, 59 meetings. And out of them, uh, same medium. So the same mediums would be both raised on starch, so there's 22, and both raised on both raised on malto, so there's 20. So it's just going to be 42 over 59, which is D. Cruising. Okay, a lot of figures on this test too. Number 17, we have this crazy figure. Okay, get some information. Which of the following is a combination of temperature and humidity at which prisms were formed? So prisms are right here. So let's see, five degrees Fahrenheit and 0.15 grams per meters cubed. Well, 0.15 is definitely too far out, right? Because we're stuck in like, under this line over here, and 0.15 is above that, so it can't be A. Um, B, 0.18 is way above that, so it can't be B. Uh, C, 20 degrees Fahrenheit and 0.02, so that's somewhere around like here-ish. Okay, that seems to work. And then D, 30 degrees, well that's outside of our zone it looks like, so D is unlikely. So our answer is going to be C, 18. Uh, we got a sample of fourth graders, like South Park Elementary School. I bet that's where they took the survey from. Uh, and if you don't watch South Park, then just ignore that joke and keep watching this video. Uh, let's see, 40 students who were complete as uh, completed a survey. 32 thought it was helpful. Which could be, uh, which is the following the largest to which the results can be applied? So we got fourth graders at this school. So. The 40 students who were surveyed, this can certainly apply to them, so we're going to leave this here, but we're looking for the largest population. So maybe there's a larger population of students to which we can apply this. All 4th graders to the school. Okay, this is fine because we took the survey of the 4th graders at the school. This is larger than A. So we can get rid of A and we can leave B for now. All students at the school, no bueno because it was a survey of 4th graders. We don't know if it would be applicable to everybody in the school, so C is out. Um, all fourth grade students in the country, oh, in, I'm sorry, in the county, again, no, because this wasn't a representative sample. If it was a bunch of randomized students from the county, you could do this, but since it was just from the fourth grade in the school, you can only extrapolate the results to the fourth graders of this school. So D is out, B is our answer. Um, number 19. Okay, another chart with a bunch of info. Of the following, which ratio is closest to the width of bales made by baler A? So that's 46. To the width of bales made by baler D, which is 40, 62. So it's 46 to 62. Um, and basically, I mean, uh, without even having to use a calculator, we can kind of tell it's going to be A. Um, but the way you, you could easily do is just do 46 over 62. It's going to give you 0.74, so A would be the answer. And number 20. Which of the following is closest to the percent by which the price of Baylor E exceeds the price of Baylor C? 
Let's see. E, the price is 46,900. 46,900. Um, C is 32,000. So we can just do like a percent change. So we can do 46,900 minus 32,000. A lot of sirens outside, probably because our mayor literally told the cops not to arrest anybody and now there's cops and ambulances. Good times in Manhattan. A plus. An A for effort to all of those politicians doing a good job protecting us. Anywho, so we're going to take this and divide it by 32,000. Basically because this is the percent change formula. New minus original over original and this will tell us uh, by how much the, it exceeds the price. By what percent it exceeds the price. So we're going to grab our calculator and do 46,900 minus 32,000. Divide this is gonna be 14,900 divided by 32,000 equals 0.46. Multiply that by a hundred, gets us 46.6 percent. And I should say times 100 percent, which equals 46.6 percent. Which is gonna be let's make that a bigger six. There we go. Which is answer choice D. Okay, number 21, x minus y equals 1, x plus y equals x squared minus 3. Okay, let's do some stuff. Um, let's first, what we can do is um, rewrite one of these uh, fractions. Uh, so we can do x equals y plus 1, and then plug it into the second equation. So y plus 1 plus y equals... Uh, bu 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 bum, uh, y plus 1 squared minus 3. So we're going to have uh, 2y plus 1 equals, uh, foil the y plus 1 out, equals y squared plus 2y plus 1 minus 3. Now let's combine some stuff. Let's, so we, can, uh, we have a 2y on both sides. We can cross those off. We have a 1 on both sides, so we can cross those off. Okay, so y, so this tells us that, um, zero equals y squared minus, let's make that cleaner. Zero equals y squared minus three. So y squared equals three. So y, should be equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So now we're just going to plug that into the top equation and see what the value of x is going to be. So let's say we plug in a positive root 3. So we're going to get x minus root 3 equals 1. So x is going to be equal to 1 plus root 3. Cool, and that already worked, so we know that A is going to be our answer, and we are done with this question. Number 22. We have a graph of an exponential function that passes through three points, which of the following is not true. A useful thing to do here would be to just basically kind of do a rough sketch of this. So let's see. Let's make a rough graph. Um, one's going to be at 0, 1. Gonna, let's say that this is 0, 1. One's gonna be at like one four. Let's say that this would be one four, and the other one's gonna be at like two sixteen. So like somewhere way up here, kind of a thing. But it's gonna look like a curve, basically. So let's see which is true, uh, which is not true. A line can be drawn that does not intersect this. Um, does not intersect this line. Well. Um, All right, let's see which of all right, let's see which of these is not true. Uh, a line can be drawn that does not intersect the graph of G. Well, this can be done, right? Let's say we draw a line like right here, like a vertical line, right? And doesn't intersect it. So that doesn't work. So that's out. Whoopsie. Uh, B, a line can be drawn that intersects the 
point the graph at exactly one point can be done also right like what if we draw like a line kind of like this that only hits it at one point so that one's out as well a, a line can be drawn that intersects at exactly two points can totally be done as well right like what if we draw something like this intersects at, at two points so that's out however we cannot draw a line that intersects at three points so d is our answer now let's switch back to red although i kind of like the blue maybe i'll keep using the blue yeah i like the blue i'm gonna keep using the blue in the right triangle the tangent of one of the acute angles is root three over three what is the tangent of the other acute angle let's draw a triangle yeah i like the blue the blue's cool so here we've got let's see two angles um let's label this one with a double that one with a single uh root three over three because tangent means opposite over adjacent so for this angle, let's say it's for angle X, it's going to be root 3 over 3. Um, now for this other angle, let's label it as Y. Um, the tangent, again, is also going to be opposite over adjacent. But for that angle, the opposite is the 3 and the adjacent is root 3. So our answer is going to be D. And 24. In the next one, plane the line L has a slope of 2 k is perpendicular to l which of the following would be an equation of line k so if it's perpendicular it's going to have a negative reciprocal slope so if this slope is two the slope we're going to be having the slope we're going to have is going to be negative one half so we just need to rearrange all the equations uh put them into slope intercept form so it's y equals like mx plus b and see which one gives us a slope of negative one half uh, a, let's see, A is going to be something like negative 5Y equals 10X plus 20. So this one's going to give us a slope of uh, negative 2. So A is wrong. B, uh, rearrange it. We're going to have negative 6Y equals negative 3X plus 14. So the slope in this case is going to be 1 half X, but... Uh, we needed negative one half, so b is out. C, negative two y equals negative four x plus seventeen, but that doesn't matter. If we divide by negative two, we're gonna have y equals two uh, x plus whatever, so that's out. So d is are gonna work. And if we need, if we were to double check d, uh, we would have twelve y equals negative six x plus thirty six. Divide both sides by six, and you would get a slope of negative one half. Take. Okay, number 25. A uh, bunch of information. Um, okay, one, uh, the smallest one has a radius of 1 foot. Next one's 4. Next one's 12. Next is 25. Okay, what is the area of the shaded region uh, representing a person's social space? So the way we're going to get that area is, um, since part of it is shaded and part of it isn't shaded, all we've got to do is we gotta take the area of the shaded region and subtract the area of the non-shaded region. Sorry, let me rephrase that. All we gotta do is take the area of the entire like social space circle and then subtract the area of everything that's not shaded and that's gonna get us the area of everything that is shaded. So that's, they told us that is 112 feet, right? So the area of, whoops, so the area of social space is going to be pi r squared, which is going to be equal to uh, pi times 12 squared, which equals 144 pi. Great. Now, the area of the uh, white circle inside, well, remember, intimate space is inside of personal space, so we can just get the area of personal space. So area of personal I don't even know what I wrote, why I wrote that personal, equals pi r squared, which equals pi times, this one's 4 feet, so 4 squared, which equals 16 pi, and 144 pi minus 16 pi is, you got it, 128 pi. B is the answer. It's 26. Let's see, we're mixing paint here. Two blue with three yellow, and then we're using the same ratio of blue to yellow as the first batch. She uses a five. Okay, how much yellow should she use? Cool. So we've got a ratio of two to three, and this needs to be equal to, um, let's see, uh, to five over x. Cool. 
So X is going to be, you know, the amount of yellow paint. Okay, so let's calculate it. Cross multiply this motherfucker. We're gonna, so this becomes uh, 2x equals 15. So x equals 7.5. Dope. Okay. Easy enough. So now we just gotta match up to the answer choices. Is 7.5 exactly 5? It is not. So get rid of it. Uh, is, let's see, 7.5. 3 ounces more than the amount of yellow used in the first batch. Well, the amount of yellow used in the first batch was 3. And 7.5 is not 3 more than 3. So B is out. 1.5 times the amount of yellow paint used in the first batch. Well, let's see, 3 times 1.5 is 4.5, which is not 7.5, so that's out. 1.5 times the amount of blue paint used in the second batch. Well, 5 was in the second batch. 5 times 1.5 is 7.5, so D works. 27, we have an equation. For what value of A does the equation of infinitely many solutions? Infinitely many solutions just means that both sides are going to be the same when we like expand everything else, uh, when we expand everything out and combine like terms. So let's try that out. Um, so we got AX minus 12 minus uh, 8X equals negative 12. Uh, okay, let's combine some like terms. So ax minus 8x equals 0. Okay, so what value of a will make it so that this equation equals 0? Easy. D. So that's our answer. Number 28. Uh, wholesale price of a kilogram of lentils. That's 2.2 pounds for you Americans, which is probably... I don't know what percentage of you guys are Americans, but anyway, um, decreased by 1% from the previous month for six consecutive months, well, yada, 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 which of the following equations could model the cost? Well, if we're drop, so we're going down, right? And it's for each 1% from each month for consecutive months. So we know this is going to be like an exponential function specifically, and it keeps decreasing. So this is going to be exponential decay. So A and B are out because they are linear functions. Now we just got to see which one is a decay. Well, if it keeps decreasing by 1%, uh, the only function that's going to be decreasing is C because we're raising a number that's less than 1 to an exponent. Remember, as you raise a fraction to an exponent, your whole uh, answer is going to get smaller. So C is the answer. 29... Uh, this is true for all values of x is bigger than 2. What is the value of rt? Um, we have two sides of an equation. What we want to do in this situation very frequently is just make them look very similar to each other. So let's do it. Uh, so we're going to need to get the same denominator. So we can multiply the first fraction by x plus 5 and the second fraction by x minus 2. So we're going to get 2 times x plus 5 over x minus 2 times x plus 5 plus 3 times x minus 2 over uh, x minus 2 times x plus 5. So this is going to become, uh, and this is going to be equal to the rx plus t over yada yada. So this becomes 2x plus 10 over x minus 2 times x plus 5 plus 3x minus 6 over x minus 2 times x plus 5. Great. Uh, and this is equal to rx plus t. But since we have the same denominators everywhere, we can kind of just drop them and set and just work with just the numerators. Perfectly fine to do. So to drop all the denominators. So we're going to get 2x plus 10 plus 3x minus 6 equals rx plus t. Cool. Combine like terms, 5x uh, plus 4 equals rx plus t, which means that uh, the number of x's on each side has to be the same, and the constants on each side has to be the same for this equation to be balanced, right? So this tells us that r equals 5, t equals 4. We want to know what is r times t. 5 times 4 is c20. And number 30, uh, ax plus a equals 3, a is a non-zero constant, which of the following must be equal to x plus 1. 
Um, so if we want to get an X plus one, looks like we can't do too much here, but you know what we can do? Uh, we can factor an A out from the left side. So we can rewrite that as A times X plus one, whoa, equals three, which means that X plus one just equals three over A. So D is the answer. And now we get to go on to the credit. Gridence time. 31, what value of x satisfies the equation above? Um, basically, it's just whatever, it's just square both sides. Uh, x plus four equals 121. So x is gonna be 121 minus four, x equals 117. Number 32, how many fish does the median number of fish caught each day in boat B exceed the median in boat A? The median is where the vertical line is within each like box portion of the box plot. So in this case, for box A, the median is 35. For box B, it's kind of hidden, but it's over here, it's 40. Uh, 40 minus 35 is five, so that is the answer, amigos. 33, A is the mean, uh, B is the median of nine consecutive integers. What is the value of A minus B? Remember this. Um, if they're consecutive, the mean is going to be equal to the median. And we could kind of test this out. Like, let's say we have, let's, for, for quickness sake, so let's, if, if there's an odd number of integers. Uh, for quickness sake, let's test this out with like five numbers. Let's say we have one, two, three, four, five. The median is just a three, right? But the average is also going to be a 3, because if we add all these together, we're going to get 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 14, plus 5 is 15, 15 over 5 numbers is 3. So the median ended up being the same as the mean. And this works for like any set of consecutive integers if there is, you know, like an odd number of those integers. So, since the mean and the median are going to be the same, the absolute value of their difference is just going to be 34 we have an equation how many seconds after this thing is launched does it reach the ground well what's the height going to be when it's at the ground zero right so we're just going to set this equal to zero then we can just divide both sides by um by negative one right because that's perfectly fine for us to do. We don't, because we have a zero on the other side. So zero equals 16t squared minus 64t uh, minus 80. Whoops, I like spit on this now, I got gross. Minus 80. Cool. Um, 16 goes into all of these, right? So this divided by 16, zero equals, uh, I got the, yeah, I messed up. Thing because of my saliva on the iPad apparently equals t squared minus 4t uh, minus well, I think it's 5 so 0 equals uh, t uh, minus 5 times t plus 1 so t is gonna be equal to 5 or negative 1 but of course uh, you know number of seconds has to be positive right so our answer is gonna be 35 a bunch of information great uh, okay so i equals v over r so we're gonna have a resistance of 500 they told us the potential difference is 6n and they told us this can be no more than 0.25. So 0.25 has to be, uh, yes, so this has to be, this current, 6n, yes, so 6n over 500 has to be less than or equal to 0.25. So just solve for n now. Um, so 125 has to be greater than or equal to 6n. n is, let's see, 125 over 6. I can't, I don't want to do that in my head. So let's see what that gets us. 125 over 6 gets us 20.83. 20.83. 20 
20.83. Um, and so we need a whole number here, right? And we know that n has to be less than this, so n has got to be 20. Almost done. Home stretch, number 36. In the, let's see where we are on time. Okay. Plenty. Okay, number 36, home stretch. Um, K intersects the wax as the point is 0, negative 6 and passes through 2, 2. 20 W lies in line K. What is the value of W? Um, okay, so we need an equation of a line. Y equals MX plus B. Um, let's get the slope. M equals, uh, we got two points, so we can just do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, e which equals 2 plus 6 over 2, which equals 4. So M equals 4. Uh, we know the y-intercept is going to be negative 6 because they told us when x equals 0, y equals negative 6. So our equation is going to be y equals uh, 4x minus 6. So now we just plug in 20 for x, y equals 4 times 20 minus 6. So y is going to be equal to 74. Easy peasy. Number 37. Okay, in a science classroom, lamps are performed, seated tables, two per table, blah, blah, blah. These are some different how many students are in a science class. Okay, um, we have a bunch of stuff here. Let's label it. Uh, let's say S equals number of students, uh, T equals number of tables. So we know if we assign two students per table, so if we say uh, 2T, um, four additional tables will be needed to seat all the students. So we can think of it this way. We know there's two students per table, right? So let's just set this up in terms of the students. 2t plus 8 is going to be s. Because 2t, right, that's going to give us the number of students, plus four additional tables, so that's going to be another eight students that are at those tables, is going to be equal to the number of students. Now, if the stu teacher assigns four students to each table, so 4t, uh, four lab tables will not be used. So, But now, four times... Um, for, in this case, we're using 4 for each table, um, and 4 won't be used, so this is going to be minus 16, and this is, again, going to be equal to S. So both of these are representative of S. So now, we just have a system of equations. Solve it however we want to solve it. Um, one way we could solve it is figure out what T is going to be, and then uh, plug it back in for S. So let's just subtract these two equations. So we're going to get 2 minus 4t, so negative 2t. 8 minus negative 16 is plus 24 is 0. Negative 2t equals negative 24, so t equals uh, 12. Plug that back in. Let's say we plug it into the top equation. We're going to get uh, 2 times 12 plus 8 equals s. So s is going to be equal to um, 32 is gonna be our answer um bit of a hard question but once you've got the equation set up for the number of students we know how to do the rest and last question and then we're gonna be done uh number y is 20 percent greater than number x okay so y equals 1.2 x z is 20 percent less than y so z equals 0.8 y uh, Z is how many is how many times X? Okay. Well, if Z equals 0.8Y, just replace Y with 1.2X. So Z is going to be uh, 0.8 times 1.2X, which is going to... So Z is going to be... Let's see. 0.8 times 1.2. Handy dandy calculator. 0.96X which means that z is 0.96 of x. So our answer is going to be 0.96, and we are done. If you like this video, please hit the like button below, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.
Adios. <laughs>